here in this animation we will show you the three essential stages to make urine by the nephron you will see nephron structure also helps this process to achieve the first process is the filtration the second process is the reabsorption or known as the tubular reabsorption and the third process is known as the tubular secretion so let's see each of these processes as an overview urine formation begins with glomerular filtration let the dots represent plasma constituents normally about 20% of the plasma that enters glomerulus is filtered and the other 80% leaves through the efferent arteriole tubular reabsorption occurs as the filtrate flows through the tubules and substances of value to the body are returned to the particular capillaries on average over 99% of the filtered plasma is reabsorbed and conserved for the body the remaining 1% contains unwanted substances and is eliminated in the form of urine the third process tubular secretion refers to the selective transfer of a few substances from the peritubular capillaries into the tubular lumen tubular secretions provide a mechanism for extracting an additional quantity of substance from the plasma and adding it to that which already present in the tubule anything which is filtered or secreted and not reabsorbed remain in the tubule to be excreted as urine let's look at the counter current hypothesis and the mechanism of counter current process that helps to transfer the solutes and water through the loop of henle and you know the loop of henle contains two different regions the descending limb of loop of henle and the ascending limb the diameter for the descending limb is thinner while the ascending limb is uh, thicker compared to the descending limb and due to the change in the diameter of this limb it helps this henle's loop to transfer water and our body to get water from this transfer so the osmolarity of the renal medulla increases progressively from 300 mosm per liter at the boundary with the cortex to maximum of 1200 at the junction with the renal pelvis okay so let's look at this change in osmolarity and how this osmolarity change help them to uh, extract out water and solutes when we read them functional distinction between the descending and ascending limb of the loop of henle of the juxta glomeruli nephrons are critical to the establishment of the vertical osmotic gradient in the renal medulla the descending limb is highly permeable to water and it is only segment of the tubule that does not exactly extrude sodium while the ascending limb actively transports sodium chloride out to the tubule into the interstitial fluid it is always impermeable to water so salt leaves without water osmolarity flowing along following along even though the flow of fluid is continuous through the loop of henle we will visualize that the happen step by step before the gradient is established the tubular fluid and medullary interstitial fluid are isotonic at 300 mosm per liter the active salt pump in ascending the uh, limb of the transport sodium and chloride of the lumen until the surrounding interstitial fluid is 200 mosm per liter more concentrated compared to the tubular one the water moves passively out from the descending limb until the osmolarity of the fluid in the descending limb and the interstitial fluid become same now advance the entire column of the fluid now the ascending pump again transports sodium chloride out while the water passively leaves the descending limb until a 200 mosm per liter differences is reestablished between the ascending limb and both the interstitial fluid and the ascending limb at each horizontal level as the tubular fluid advances still further the gradient is disrupted once again at all levels again active extrusion of the sodium chloride from the ascending limb couples with the net diffusion of water out to the descending limb reestablishes the 200 mosm liter uh, gradient of all levels as this process continues the fluid in descending limb becomes increasingly more hypertonic it reaches a maximum concentration of 1200 mosm per liter at the bottom of the loop that's why you will see this because the interstitial fluid always achieves equilibrium with the descending limb a gradient is likewise established in the medullary interstitial fluid in contrast the concentration of the tubular fluid and the ascending limb progressively decreases as salt is pumped out and the water is unable to flow 
Note that even though the ascending limb pump can generate a gradient of only 200 MOSM per liter at each horizontal level, this effect is multiplied into a larger vertical gradient because of the counter current flow within the loop. This concentrating mechanism is known as the counter current multiplication.